right, check out our room. Whoa! Really, really big. Um, I'm up at Kripalu, just met Eric, and he's teaching tonight, so I thought I'd take you for a bit. <laughs> Look, shop. Ooh. I'll take you in there later. Mm. Look who it is! <laughs> Say hello. Look, you're on Kavicha. Look what I found. Kombucha! How the calf is basically two spirals, is what I discovered. <coughs> And you know, I, I, you, you learn that at Harvard, so everyone talks about square and this like that, and that sort of, but it's not a square. How can that happen? So, you know, how, how can that happen that everyone says square and it ain't a square? Don't ask me, okay? So you have two spirals in your pelvis that actually move spirilically. We'll see that, how they move. They move like spirals. In fact, all bones move like spirals. You cannot learn this through spiral movement. I just want to say this right away, yeah? <laughs> so if you do a spiral movement, you still can be completely unconscious of the yeah. spirals in you, yeah? Like that. So we're learning the internal spirals, the spirals that exist in everyone's movement, whether they know it or not. So all the people doing yoga, what they're doing, they're, they are using spirals in the body, they're just not aware of it. And if you're not aware of it, you can't use that principle to improve your movement, right? You're just, you're just improving your patterns. I would never be experiencing anywhere near the incredibleness and bliss and happiness had it not been for Eric. <laughs> For you, but sort of semi brainwashed by you know all these other ideas, right? And these authority figures. But look, can we just stop and take a look at this for a minute? Yeah. Look, authenticity better is one's own dharma through imperfectly carried out than the dharma of another carried out perfectly. Better is death in the fulfillment of one's own dharma, for to follow the law of another brings spiritual peril. Great spiritual peril. Great spiritual peril, uh-oh. Bhagavad Gita, okay? So stop following these authority figures and start embodying your function, noticing what works for you, right. discovering your best function. Right. And stop, you know, buying into We're all going these fantastical the, cues. The I'm thing is, right? And they just tell you to do things. Put your body here and put your body there and square your shoulders and it doesn't work and it's not right and it hurts. And the feelings you get in your body of tension are your body trying to tell you it doesn't work. Right? Right. He's so freaking good explaining this. You should have been here. What were you doing? Uh. Not at Eric's workshop. Right? Right? Next time. Next time. You're going to the loo? Yeah. So, yeah. Stop running around trying to find the things, trying to find the person who has your answer and Learn about you. Learn about how you function. And why is it hard to get this? I I don't know when I know. I know because I do remember and it's it's such a deep change. Is the principle clear? And you've heard of tensegrity perhaps, yeah? Mm -hmm. So this is tension, integrity. This is a tensegrity model. And the body, actually, the whole spine and the pelvis function very much like a tensegrity model. So the cool thing about this, as opposed to, I'm going to send you off again to get something. Can you get a brick over there? Yeah. 
The coolest thing about a tensegrity bottle is that no matter where you pressure it, the whole system absorbs force. Can you see that? No matter where you push, the whole system absorbs force. And your pelvis is a tensegrity model, your spine is a tensegrity model, your shoulder girdle is a tensegrity model. So, you remember what we said yesterday, which I kept emphasizing? I believe, and you know, when you teach you all, you have to come from some kind of belief. I believe the first thing you could teach a person interested in the movement regimen is what is healthy movement. The second thing you teach them is the exercise so that they can apply healthy movement within that exercise and to produce healthy movement you need on to understand the reason the e reason for the existence for example of a disc and how it functions based in movement then you go and move that would be the ideal progression is it challenging to do that no it would take much less time to learn all that than it would take you know like uh, in, with school we spend endless time and we never you know there's no lesson on how to use your body well in this lifetime, you know? How to have a good experience in your body in this lifetime. You see the difference between this brick and this? So this here doesn't absorb force in the whole system. So if I push here, only this side is absorbing force. Nothing's happening over there. But if I push here, on one side of this, that side over there is also absorbing force. So that's what the tire does. That's what a tensegrity system does. The brick doesn't do it, your body does it, that pillar does not do it. So the weight over there is resting on that pillar, right? The weight over there is not resting on that pillar. You see what I'm saying? But if that, this were a tensegrity system, the weight would all be resting everywhere. And then you can be much more lightweight and it's actually safer. So uh, which tree survives the storm? The flexible tree? Yeah? Or the rigid tree. Flexible. Right? So there we go. Yeah? So let's all train to be still, which I also heard last night. You know, be, stay, you know. So let's all, no, train to be flexible. Flow, yeah? Oscillate, like that. Allow yourself to move, and you will find stillness in movement then you will be able to be still. If you try to hold yourself still, you'll feel rigid. You won't, you know, you won't feel still. You'll feel stressed. Yeah? Interesting yoga discussions happening at this table. Yeah, well, we're just saying... Eric Franklin, Damien McCann, and me, with more right. It's in the, if you want to be a yogi, it's in the motivation. It's not in the movement. The purpose of the movement is to increase your plasticity, so your body becomes more receptive and able to experience yogic forces. But there's no specific movement that if you just do this one enough, uh, all of a sudden you'll be illuminated. No, because that will be unyogic. Whereas the infinite variability of the universe here, the infinite laughter of the universe expresses itself in infinite different kinds of movement. Exactly. So. It's in the motivation <laughs> of the movement. So I could like I've been explaining I could this get to in this morning. position yeah. here. <laughs> finally like, getting so, finally get it. so <laughs> motivated, you know, to experience higher planes of consciousness. And this is the this is the portion that will bring me there. I can feel it like it's doing something. So now I go out and teach this to everyone who works for me. So you need to touch your ribs exactly here and the top of your head right there. Rotate your spine exactly. How is that, David? Uh, I think now, I'm enlightened. Yeah. You, have to, you have to rotate your head a little more. You know you're not doing it properly. That's the problem. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, well, actually the news is really good. Actually the news is that there's many more possibilities. As many possibilities as there are souls to reach the higher planes of consciousness, of course. Otherwise, we wouldn't have an individual path. We'd just be robots. If there were a set system of shapes and figures through which, you know, like a wormhole, you can arrive at spiritual consciousness, then, you know, that would really be like a recipe and no one really would have to change anything about themselves. Just do those poses long enough and there they are. That's all I have to say right here after lunch. I'm going to show you the food. Ah, check out this dining room. Ah.
just spent the weekend up here at Kripalu with Eric where he's been teaching Franklin Method amongst all the yoga ness and all the yoga people. It's been quite a trip I have to say and made me so so thankful that I understand my body, that I understand what is healthy for it, what is not healthy for it that I understand how to use my mind and that I can go into a class, I can go into a yoga class and I can choose based on my experience and my knowing and my awareness whether what I'm being told, the cue I'm being told, the position I'm being told to put my body in is in fact going to be helpful for me or not helpful for me. And I see so many people struggling and confused and frustrated and then they're getting tighter and they're practicing all this tension and being told this is how it is and you need to breathe into the resistance and you know stop being so tense and square your shoulders and align your hips and just a whole bunch of things which don't work and um, you know, it's challenging because here I am amongst all of these believers believing what they've been told, taught, told by the, you know, teachers and gurus and, you know, as we read on the wall, you don't follow someone else's path. And um, I guess I'm just uh, really taking another step into realizing my path is to share the path of self-discovery through understanding what is, through the truth, through the anatomy, through what you can't argue with. When you have a bunch of people and you say, okay, experience this or experience that. Here's the science. Here's how you're designed. And now you make your decision. There's no debate. And it's so freeing. And... I'm just so deeply grateful and um, part of me has been kind of afraid of stepping up and like saying some of these things that I feel need to be said, you know, like I will walk out of a yoga class after 20 minutes if my body is saying, no Laura, this isn't helpful. Like that teacher has power over your body and if they don't understand you and your body, they can be injuring you. The thing is you just don't know that unless you've had the experience and you know the information and you've been lucky enough to be, you know, not just even experience it but swim in this for long enough to have enough internal shifts where it's okay to go against what everyone else is telling you. It's okay to not listen to the teacher who is supposed to know more than you and who is telling you you should be doing this thing and you should understand this thing and listen to me because I know. And then even if they're saying don't listen to me but the imagery is so subtle. It's so subtle and there's such mind games that go on. So anyway, I guess this is my video to you to and to myself to say I'm ready to take this to the next level. I will not be afraid of telling you some more things that don't work for you to consider and experience and maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't like it. That's not my problem. My goal, my vision, my one reason for being here on this planet is to give you my truth, to share with you ways to step closer to your truth, and that 
it's probably going to go against some of the things you currently believe, and that's okay. So, that's what I have to say. I've taken you a little tour of Kripalu. I'm going to walk back with the hill, and Holy Shift starts tomorrow. I'm super excited. If you're not there, sorry, you're going to miss out on amazingness. And if you are there, I can't wait to see you there because it's going to be miraculous. Okay, I will see you very soon. Now I'm cold, so I'm going in. Bye! This is the Kripalu shop. Look! Look! There's you! Aww.